Welcome to the Milton Mowbray Methodist Circuit Service. I hope that you are well and you'll enjoy this time of sharing worship with us. My thanks to those who are helping us with this service, to Sue for reading and Jenny who is leading our prayers and for editing and managing the online content. Our theme today is taken from our reading in Luke chapter 10 verse 5. Peace to this house. First, let us share together in our first hymn, 743, Come, let us join our cheerful songs. And then Jenny will lead us in our prayers. We've got a, um, a passion flower in our garden which we planted last year and it didn't have any flowers on it but this year we've got some flowers so we're really looking forward to seeing those all come out. We've got a beautiful clematis in our front garden which is covered in dark purple flowers at the moment and it makes you really realise how wonderful God's creation is, doesn't it? So for our prayers of praise and confession this morning, for the prayers of praise, we're going to use the um, Psalm 8. And you'll be able to see the words on the screen and you will see some lovely pictures that go with the words. And I will read them slowly and then um, we can sort of meditate on those words as a prayer. And then at the end, there's a prayer of confession. So keep your eyes open while you pray today. And let's look at this wonderful psalm together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children 
and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild. The birds in the sky. and the fish in the sea. All that swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, forgive us when we have neglected to acknowledge your importance in our lives. Forgive us when we have prioritised the trivial, when we have enthroned other things in our hearts. Restore our focus on you. Help us begin again. Reclaim and redeem us, God of everything, embedding in us a longing for your kingdom and a sense of your majesty. Amen. And now we're going to say the words that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is Father, hear the prayer we offer. And after that, Sue Mayhew is going to read our Gospel reading.
today is Luke 10, verses 1 to 11 and 16 to 20. Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs of, among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town you, and are welcomed, eat what is set for you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you. But when you enter a town and you are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to use to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We come now to our time of reflection on the reading that we've heard from Luke. Last week we heard of the cost of following Jesus. And so now we hear that 72 were appointed to be his disciples. 72 is a reference to the 72 nations that were not of Israel, and therefore these were all Gentile nations, people who were the great unwashed and unknown. Hence, there's a reference there to lambs among wolves. The task was, and still is, to make disciples of all nations, and so offering a gospel of peace to a foreign country where the rule of law may well not be the norm. Peace to this house was the missionary cry. Disciples should bring peace into each house that they would step. Fear is often a natural reason for failing to act. What would we do when faced with a person with a knife? running along the street. I think I'd be afraid of what might happen. We read so much about knife crime in our country. And our natural reaction, I'm sure, is to be afraid and to run away or to call the police. But Jesus understood the natural fear and sent his disciples in pairs to offer support and confidence. Jesus understands that fear is an agent that prevents us from doing and engaging in the higher things and setting out to do the nobler causes. Sometimes we have to go into new places where our message may not be welcome. But as we go, we know that we are never alone. This way of team working emboldens us to say and do the things that Jesus would say and do without fear. We are reminded of the words of Saint Teresa of Avila. 
Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. The first disciples were sent out and Jesus was still with them. He was with them to encourage and coach them in the ways of the Lord. Peace to this house was the theme of his sending out. Our world today has experienced so much warfare and destruction that the message of peace rings very true at this time. The church must remain a force for seeking peace in our world because God has created a world where there is enough for everyone. There is food, clothing, shelter. He sends into the world everything that we need. It is humankind that has found it so difficult to share things. The church provides fellow Christians and a setting for prayer and worship, a place to reflect on God's word. We've joined a fellowship of believers. There are many people who are troubled in the present time, and often they come into the church seeking kindness. There are families who are separated or estranged by circumstances, loneliness, drug dependency. We recently had a good friend who decided to end his life. And so we prayed with his friends and asked for peace. Our world has so much trouble, often referred to as mental health problems, and the local authority are asked to deal with it. Mental health teams are sent to support and to provide help for people with these problems. And everyone that is in need should be able to reach out and find help. Very often these teams struggle to provide the right support. And sometimes it ends in tragic circumstances. And then we blame the very people who came to help and they end up in court answering for their failure. Surely we must all play a part in healing our broken society. Jesus said in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These are the words of comfort in a world of uncertainty. God removes the fear from our hearts when we have the words of Jesus to rely on. Jesus offers assurance that we are always held in God's hands and that no harm will come to us, to any of us who love the Lord. Fanny Crosby wrote in that famous hymn, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We sing these words with great enthusiasm in the knowledge that we have a saviour who will protect us from anything, anything that the world can throw at us anyway. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. This reference reminds us that there is no rest for us. We are all to continue bringing peace into every home and every place where we find ourselves. The harvest that we are thinking of was brought about by the tireless work of our families in the past, predecessors of us who proclaimed the gospel and preached in every part of our land, bringing news, good news, and sending a message of peace to all who would listen. 
the preachers of my father's generation and my grandfather's generation would preach several times on a Sunday, travelling by bicycle or on horseback to every church or chapel in the land. They were welcomed and encouraged as they built the foundation on which our church is founded today. Often they were not qualified, sometimes not fully literate. There were miners, farmers, fishermen, window cleaners, tradespeople of all callings. But they brought the message on which we now, our faith depends. We find in Isaiah 52, chapter, verse 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Perhaps today we can all reflect on the inheritance that we have, a gift from our parents and grandparents. I pray that we can all be one of the 72 travelling light with a message of peace in all we do or say we bring peace into this world peace into this house peace into every house amen and now i'd like us all to share together in singing the faith 404 God's spirit is in my heart. Go tell everyone. God's spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I Yeah.
And now we come to our time of prayers of concern and intercession for ourselves and for others. Let us pray. Blessed God, we have thought and reflected on peace and love. And now we bring our prayers, among others, for those who live and they have no peace, for those who find no love, for those whose lives are lived with the backdrop of war, violence and conflict, those whose families have been torn apart and fractured by the act of war, those who find themselves without home, without family, without love, cast adrift from what they know and what has nurtured them because others have acted callously and violently with greed and with selfishness. For those who live in fear each day of more attacks, more bombs, more violence. For those who have died in the cause of war and the family they leave behind. The lives that need to be remade, recovered and resolved. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. For those whose homes and livelihoods have been all but washed away and destroyed in Pakistan and India, whose existence is at best precarious, whose possessions such, such as that are left are inadequate to meet their daily needs. For the world as a whole, as it contemplates the ravages of climate change, the changes we as humanity will need to make to ensure safety, security and resilience for future generations. As we pray for others, we pray also for ourselves that we may be prepared to make changes in our lifestyle for the greater good of those who follow. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. For those who have lived and who still live in loveless households where violence and abuse are normal, where people live treading on eggshells for fear of the next abusive attack and violent outburst, for those who fear for their safety on a daily basis, who inwardly cry for help but outwardly are fearful for asking for it. For those who seek to help and bring into the open the abuse and who seek to offer love. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. For those who are discriminated against because of gender identity, disfigurement, disability, religion or ethnic origin when we are all made in God's image. Such discrimination seems to go against the commands to love our neighbours as ourselves, to treat others as we would like to be treated. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. For those in authority, in business and government, that they may see a way forward that is honest and respectful, that treats those in need with dignity, care and support, that they may offer hope and light to the underprivileged and those in need. May society become a kinder, more inclusive place that values the needs and respects the views of those around them. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. For families and households across the world who are struggling and will struggle yet more with the cost of living increases, commodity shortages that are around, for those who go without because they have no choice, while others live excessive lifestyles. For those who feel 
forced into criminal ways of surviving and living and who end up in deeper, darker places which are more needy as a result. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray, for the lonely and the lost, the bereaved and the grieving, the ill and the dying, the hands of love, fellowship, hospitality and care may be stretched out to them, that warmth and love and light and hope may be passed by a gentle touch, a smile, a word. God of peace and love, bless those for whom we pray. Bless all these, O God, for whom we have prayed, that they may come to know compassion from us and life from you. Amen. For all these prayers, we ask in and through the name of Jesus, who came for us, that we might know him more fully, day by day. Now we come to our final prayer. We have a gospel to proclaim, number 418. blessing and a sending out prayer. Where there is conflict, let there be peace. Where there is fearfulness, let there be peace. Where there is anger, let there be peace. Where there is violence, let there be peace. May God's peace rest on our homes and all who live in them. 
now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Next week, Sharon will be leading our worship. Until then, Shalom. Peace be with you and all those you meet. Yeah.